Hey and welcome back to a new video. Today will be all about Gigabyte and we're starting in the area where I have basically no clue of. It's enterprise solution. So we have a lot of server-based motherboards that we can see right here. And interestingly, the corner that was empty for most of the time is getting more crowded now. But one of the most impressive things that I could find here is this. It is a server that is filled with NVIDIA HGX B300 GPUs. And those are like Blackwell Ultra, so you could say it's basically RTX 5090, well, Blackwell GPUs on steroids. And I think a rack or a server like this should easily cost like 200,000 US dollars. And probably one of the GPUs, maybe 20,000, I have no clue. I have no clue, it's just wild guessing. And even though I think NVIDIA would never send this to me, I can probably claim that I had the chance to peel off the protective film of a 30,000 30, uh, US dollar GPU. I think I will keep this as a souvenir. You might remember my 3M Novak phase change cooling systems. And these originally came also from the enterprise market. Now this is something similar. It's not quite exactly the same, but it's also an immersion cooling system based on Epic 9000 servers. So you could hang a bunch of these Epic 9000 servers just right in this tank. And then you would fill this tank with a liquid. So they, is, they are fully submerged into the liquid, but it's a bit different because it's not a dual phase sy uh, system. It's a single phase liquid, which means the liquid would not evaporate. It would stay at the same liquid phase, which means that the liquid would have to be actively cooled. So probably there's a connector in the back where the liquid would be swapped and actively cooled. Another thing I usually would not have contact with is CXL 2.0, which is essentially a memory expansion thing for the CPU if you run out of memory, for example, if all the slots next to your CPU are already fully occupied and you still want to expand this further, there are different ways to do it. This is one way with this PCIe memory expansion card that would be plugged in this slot right here. There's another form factor, it's again CXL, but just physically a little bit different. It's again using PCIe 5.0 protocol. Here you have Micron 128 gigabyte module and you could occupy all the slots in front and increase the memory of your CPU drastically. I guess that's also something you would need for AI applications probably. I think the craziest system for assembly and maintenance I have ever seen is this server. It is fully water-cooled with one new height and what I find crazy about this is the memory water-cooling solution because this is essentially one loop. So the water goes from here through the memory lanes right here. So all of this is like a water channel and goes out to the back, which means that it's, it's crazy hard to assemble. They have to take all of the heat sinks out, input the memory dips from the bottom and then assemble everything. Which means that, I mean, if, if ever one of the memory modules fails, this is gonna be a nightmare to maintenance. It is getting more and more crowded at this booth because Jensen is about to appear here, which means that it's the perfect time for me to escape. The booth was in general really interesting. It's a lot of stuff I have like no knowledge about. I still find it interesting to see, for example, the memory expansion card, but now we will walk over to another booth where I think they're displaying some more consumer-oriented parts. Gigabyte really went full out this year. Like we just went over there to the enterprise server booth, which is already absurdly huge. Behind me, they have more consumer stuff, like I said. This is mainly notebook oriented, but you know, I'm not really a notebook gaming guy, so I'm kind of skipping that. They already told me they had a third thing, which is like a private booth, and there they're showcasing more consumer stuff, the one I'm looking for, like GPUs. It's time to experience the epic performance and computing power of Hetzner's powerful lineup of dedicated GPU servers. Built for speed and performance to train machine learning models, simulations, or other high-end graphic applications. The servers feature cutting-edge NVIDIA GPUs like the RTX 6000 ADA generation with ECC memory and 48 gigabytes of VRAM. They're also paired with fast NVMe storage, top-tier CPUs and high-capacity memory. Everything hosted in their own GDPR-compliant data centers. Find out more in the link below. And with this, we made the transition to the Gigabyte VIP suite, where they're showing desktop components. So we will look at some of the GPUs, some of the motherboards, and I even spotted one of those memory expansion modules, but this time not for servers, but for desktop PCs. We're starting with some GPUs and especially our loft RTX 5060. 
And while I don't want to yeah, discuss or debate too much about review tactics and review policies, what I found interesting again about this card is the ratio of cooler length versus actual PCB length. The PCB is only this long, but the cooler extends much longer, which means that this card is over 50% of the length, it's just the heatsink itself. Also, one thing that is kind of special is the 8-pin PCIe connector location. While it's great that it's not 12-volt high power, it wouldn't matter too much on this card because the power draw is not that high. It is still interesting to see the 8-pin all the way in front. I personally think it could be an advantage over having it in the center because I don't like you know, the cable just hanging over the middle of the card. But I think it could be a challenge depending what kind of case you have depending where your 8-pin power cable can go through to the back, for example, can definitely be a limiting factor for building. Especially relevant for the SFF community is this RTX 5060. And I know this because I also have this version of the RTX 4060. There also should be a low-profile bracket included, and that's what makes this card kind of special, I think. After the 4060 is now phased out, this is probably the fastest low-profile desktop card uh, that you can get in this format. They're also showcasing a couple different motherboards. Only a few of them are actually new. For example, this X870, which is a stealth version. Stealth version for Gigabyte means that the connectors are on the back side. So as you know, all the relevant like power and data connectors are just on the back. And in addition to that, they're also showing stealth compatible cases. The Tachyon mainboards are probably some of the most special that you could get right now with the memory location being on top, like north of the CPU. And this is an even more special version of the special motherboard because it's a Cam 2 version. This is the memory expansion card I was talking about for desktop systems. And that's the system behind me, which is using the Gigabyte AI components and this time I would say it is actually okay to use this for advertising because they're running a locally hosted Linux based AI training utility and that is a big difference to what we had last year where I was also joking a lot about AI this year it actually improved because a lot of the builders or manufacturers they're showcasing actual use cases of AI and with that I'm fine, you know, it's fine advertising AI if you're actually using it. That is the expansion card up close. We have X16 lanes PCIe Gen 5 and we have a chip from Microchip, which is controlling the access to the four DIMM slots, which will be using RDIMM and up to 128 gigabytes of memory, which totals 512 gigabytes. And you could also use, for example, two of them, which would allow to increase the memory capacity of your system by a total, for example, by one terabyte. It is obviously up to the application to access the memory on here. So it's not like just plug and play that you plug it in and then your CPU randomly just has access to additional one terabyte of memory. It is up to the application. And with this, we are ending our tour from the Gigabyte booth that was much better than I personally expected, especially with the enterprise solutions that they showed, for example, this memory expansion card. It's just obscure to me, who is never in touch with those kind of solutions and just seeing this up close was actually quite interesting. And I hope you also enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.